Welcome dear viewer, welcome to trebuchets. What trebuchets you may ask? I didn't see any indication we'd be starting with trebuchets in this episode. Well, we are because we have moved our dear fellow Barragand outside of uh, the walls he took in Caras. And he is moving to put pressure on Isengard yet again. And so Isengard has responded with an army midway through. Basically saying, yeah, you can come at us, but we're going to come at you too. And oh, how we want it. Welcome to Dol Ambros, the campaign that never ceases to um, give the right horses for the right courses, you know. Um, our horses for today being the Seaward Lancers and the Knights of Terthayar. Overall, of course, if you're new here, this is the Captain Total Waffle Show, where... We play the Medieval 2 Total War game, a uh, strategy game of uh, a lovely, uh, slightly vintage complexion, if you will. At least it's, you know, about 15 years old. And um, we chat about all sorts of stuff. I'm glad to have you along. <sighs> so now, we have Uruks coming at us. They have the heavily armoured variety, they have the less heavily armoured variety. And uh, you know what, I think I'm going to do most of my... put most of my effort into uh, smacking up the low armoured variety and to shoot the more heavily armoured variety. For instance, the pikemen, they are prime... <gasps> Arrow for the heart oh <laughs> Good on you, Knights of Therathaya. You basically reduced the raiders to your number of troops. That is wonderful. Just give him another round. Okay, over here, the enemy's coming in, but we can do something about that. They haven't even hit. Well, um, <laughs> excuse that little technical glitch. That is what happens when I receive a call on my phone, and I just did. Uh, a very gracious call, as a matter of fact, and uh, one that uh, one shall be happy to. It's basically uh, regarding the... Uh, uh, maintenance of my apartment and the status update and da 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 And uh, well, the news are basically good. And I guess that's all you need to know. Anyway, we are charging all manner of cavalry into all manner of infantry because this is the anti Isengard experience. And we're trying to go for the squishiest parts of their little army here. Some uh, crossbows there. Oh, hello, Reavers. Welcome to the fight, lads. <laughs> are you happy? Mm, I hope you are. And then we're going to uh, also charge those that are all preoccupied, as it were. Oh, trebuchet. Uh, nice shot, but uh, a little too close to home. But we did route the infantry. And I'm sure that that trebuchet blast actually had a pretty... pretty sizable impact on that particular uh, calculus. Mm. Spear guard. No, we don't really want to take those on directly. But we need this. And that. And then we have a center that's gonna hold like the champs they are. Oh, yes, yes. My pole arms against yours, Isengard. Take it. Take it. And through the day you ever had to fight the Silver Swan. Um. Yeah. Charging the crossbows. What are these Reavers doing? What's going on with you guys? What? What is your game? Oh, now you're returning. <laughs> That's a bit weird. Come on, Isengard. Take this seriously. <laughs> Uh, okie dokie, yeah. So in a battle like this, it's all about controlling the momentum. And we are. We are keeping their melee forces occupied whenever they get anywhere near our battle line. And of course, our cavalry also having a field day with their archers. Only half the enemy force I remains. think we can let our, our trebuchets... Favor. Off From the hook now. Oh, we'll just start marching some uh, troops into their archer ranks. That should be good. Yeah, come here, wardens. That's gonna be good. Oh, some reavers. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Let me say hello. 
Okay. Um, you guys are having a lovely time, aren't you? But uh, I also want you to have a lot of time tomorrow, so let's get you out of harm's way. While our Talon Knights rush. To meet the foe. Oh, hello. Speaking of meeting the foe. What are all these archers up to? What are you doing? Oh, well, those spear guard. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't want our troops near those. Well, certainly not our cavalry troops, because you see, that's what happens. Yeah, they stab them, and then uh, we go splodgy, splodgy, blobby, blobby. And uh, splodgy, splodgy, blobby, blobby is a very unhelpful state for a cavalryman. But our infantry shall be more than merry about the prospect of um, dealing with spearmen such as those. Come, dear pikemen! Come, dear friends! Now, what are you guys shooting at? Just, uh... Ah, okay. The Reavers. Yeah, okay. You can sort of stop what you're doing now, eh? I gather. Yeah. Spear guard. We're just chasing down our troops. Chasing down our troops. They're just chasing down our troops. Chasing down our troops. Raven Guard! Talon Knights! We're leading the Spear Guard straight to you. So, uh, do me proud. Do me very, very proud. And proud is certainly how I feel seeing this, because there are, the enemy is already wavering. And that's the stiffest opposition we've got left. Not much. As you will no doubt appreciate at this point. We have basically... The enemy general the enemy army yeah. the we've brought them the to a lovely stop on this field today. So we'll just speed up the time and uh, have a lovely bit of fun with the rest of them. We lost quite a bit of cavalry, but we still have enough to make a real difference to any fight we engage in next. Which will probably be for the city itself. There's a city over there that we want to get to. But uh, step number one is to make sure that all these bastards don't make it back. Because if they do, our job gets that much harder. If they don't. We might just be able to run straight into the city using our lovely siege machines. Yes. Because we do like those. The enemy are oh, look at that. Vanquished. Nine percent. This is a great victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. And we did regain a bit of cavalry after this, which is definitely desired. So, hooray. Um, any other standouts? Well... Talon Knights, maybe? Yeah, I mean, losing very few per number of kills. So that is definitely, uh, definitely good. Oh, yeah. Splendid! Let's move on. And as we come back from battle, what do we do to the Dominion of Isengard? Well, I will tell you. And if you want more executions like that, subscribe for more. Hey, well, how's that for a call to action? Oh, it seems that the enemy has even upgraded Breknaz and its walls since the last time we looked. Um, this, of course, is cause for consternation because it means that we will have no real opportunity to improve upon the visual aspect of uh, the campaign map in that particular place. Sad. But, why be sad all the time when really we still have 
the capability of pushing many, many, many forces over the line. <laughs> I mean, look at all these lovely boogers. Kruven, can you uh, get into somewhere? Like this? No? No, no. Apparently not. Mirion, you'll stay there for another turn, but then you can sort of move out with whatever armies we have to hand. And that will be um, quite a lot. Ah, yes. Hello, Ulrich. Going for Minas Thiel, I gather. Well, best of luck with that. We've got the most experienced talent knights in the world. <laughs> At least it's hard for them to get any more experience than they already are. You know, it might be kind of fun to uh, just sneak in a siege crew. But can we? Eh. Barely. Seems to be the answer to that. Okay, we have a load of armies all around the map. And they need to do stuff. So, we have Meldir out here, you know, starting from the east, as perhaps we should. Yeah, we have all the armies that have been formerly dedicated to the defeat of the Variags, who have now taken it upon themselves to punish Sauron for his yes, perceived Lord. slights against them. Um, just, I mean, I mean, he did basically use them as meat shields to try to delay Let us sit up camp here. our eventual dominance. Let us sit up camp here. And where has that brought the Dark Lord? Well, <laughs> it has brought the Baradur under our very, very capable control. Um... So yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with sending Kelefendor into Nurn. Um My Ghost. You can just concentrate on uh, a little bit of retraining here and there. And Prince Adrahil. We'll have to send you even further into what are actually runic lands. Rune with whom we have no existing diplomatic relations. So, uh, Prince Atrahil could be going as a diplomat. Or he could be going as what he's really known for at this point. He is a conqueror. He really is. Ah, he's taken Sturlitz, I can. He's taken so many places. And then, you know, in his footsteps follows Meldir. So that's basically the south. There's also a little army here, but um, we would need someone to lead it. Or at least we would need to give them the... Um, the impression that they might actually find a fruitful purpose wherever they go. Which they may. But I want to build that barracks first, because otherwise the public order situation is probably going to get a little out of hand. You see... Yeah, this 5% extra could be nice, and then with an additional 3 turns of also just reducing the cultural unrest very gradually, it's all going to help. Yeah, it is all going to help. And similarly here, we're getting a guard barracks, the upgrade to the first level, and it will bring us the standard infantry that so desperately wants some retraining there. I see a wounded unit, a unit without full numbers of troops, and it basically makes me cry. <sighs> I guess that does explain a little bit of my in-game behaviour, doesn't it? I just really like freshly retrained tr troops. There are people who don't care about that whatsoever. But I have to admit, my friends, I do. So, yeah, there's that. Now, um, moving west from that, uh, where are we going? Okay. Well, we have Minas Ithil over here, and Minas Ithil is going to need a bit of a defender, probably.
We could be sending these guys. And uh, anyone else? They could make it in another turn as well. So one of those. And uh, do we have any cavalry laying around? Just some spare horsemen? Not much really. But, I mean, we do have these. But they're not quite close enough to where I'd want them. Baratur, can you send anything? Sort of. Seems to be the answer. But maybe we don't need it. It's a defensive battle, after all. And we've got some decent defensive units. We've got four archers. We've got some of the better defensive units in the entire game and um... Orders. I guess I can be happy with that Captain of Gondor, my lord. Your will, my lord. Can we retrain for weapons here in Ostathiel? I think we can, yes. We have a Royal Swordsman's Guild, so we are going to take um, the horses in here, put them in Ostathiel. Some go into a fort, some go uh, into other places. Cannon had. Lovely. Yeah. Very good, very good. Now, Carmen. Kamen will be moving into Rune from the west. Uh, what does he have lack of and what does he have plenty of? We could, uh, you know what, we could take away some pikes, I think. Some of the less well-trained pikes. And we'll just send them elsewhere and then um, we'll get our finest cavalry in there. We build a little watchtower to increase our sight range. Especially for when uh, that lovely lad is no longer there. And I'm thinking of building a tower right here. Let us sit up camp here. And one right there on the way back. Alright. Yes. Now we are going to give these Easterlings of Rune a chance. They seem to be pretty hard done by at this point, because Mr. Inder's under siege. So, we're going to see if they're going to let us just purchase the most valuable settlement, settlement of Mathram for a trifling amount of money. And if uh, they don't agree to such terms, well, we, we might just um, send all of our might right into their lands. And we may do that uh, anyway, really. <laughs> You know, we, we have been provoked by less in ages past. <laughs> yes. Alright, Branon. You have a mission, and it lies in Helm's Deep. March to Helm's Deep! Leave none alive! I mean, unless it can't be helped, of course. We're a bit flexible here in this part of the world. And then we have Balagund, who is himself relatively under strength. So he was not com completely prepared for anything and everything, but he can definitely siege down Breknas for a while. That will be useful. And it seems that Isengard is stretched at this point. They threw quite a lot at us, and we just beat it and smashed it for them never to return. So, unless they can send help in one, two turns, then Breknas is basically done for. And that is good enough for me. Let's go on a quick training spree in our homelands. So, we get some Athelian Rangers. They're also. I mean, it's always a blessing to have those guys around. Um, because they have such long range, good accuracy. It's a, it's a joy to work with. And they pack a lovely punch. Um, and and that's not just me talking about uh, 
their Christmas routine. No, 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 no. They do just pack a lovely punch in the very concrete sense of the word. Okay, maybe not completely concrete because packing a punch? I mean, what do you pack a punch in? A newspaper? that will be a sucker punch, maybe. Maybe that's just what they do. They go sucker punching the enemy. Yeah. Okay. Um... You know, like in, uh, in... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, that is. Yeah. Coming up to, uh, whoever opposes you and, uh, trying to confuse them and say, Oh my gosh, run, 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 and then smack, and, uh, Nazi falls to the ground. It's a perfect strategy. Works every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or at least it worked that one time. But that might just be because it's John Riz Davis. Speaking of which, I mean... He also plays uh, Gimli in The Lord of the Rings. What a lovely actor. Anyway. I think I'm going to quit babbling for now. And just, um... Give this whole thing one more turn. And we'll see if Onodrith decides to uh, push troops westward. If they do, they'll find a bit of a gauntlet to get through. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, Eisenrun could actually also deploy some troops. But they might be too late. Another turn has come and gone, and Isengard has basically done bugger all. And, uh, you know, I guess we like that, don't we? Ah, hello there, Grolk. So you are going to attack me, are you? No, you're not. I'm going to pull into a fort, I think. Or maybe... Nah, no, we can't reach him. We can definitely stop this bugger here. So, Bordevin. Yeah, you're going to be smacking him. Let's just check uh, the stuff. Okay, we've got some skills. Somebody has given birth to a boy. Life is good. Plenty of trained troops. Our oh, military is doing what militaries do. Having state expenditures been out of control. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, let's also get a militia garrison here because the public order bonus it will produce will reduce corruption more than the upkeep of the building. So that is lovely. Shuttle card. Just keep building. Just keep building. We will address corruption inevitably. Hmm. And in time. Ambrun. Lovely trade facilities you got there. Maybe we want the royal garrison as well. You know, just whenever you've got time. Again, with those uh, public order bonuses. It's just a lovely thing. And here, Ithraid. Hmm. Well, this is an economic settlement above all else. So, we will treat it as such. Oyubimari. Give me more pikemen, perhaps? Hmm, could be nice. Overall. I think it's a good idea. Because even if they are not as well equipped as the ones we already have here. Oh, hello, Mr. Dot. Um, yeah, so even if they're not as good as the other ones, we can always just leave them behind as defensive forces and take the better trained and experienced forces and send them on into Rune. Okay, uh, Foldburg. Hmm, you are getting trebuchets and I like it quite a lot. Because then we can take all our trebuchets and show Isengard what we've got. Um, and Calabrin. We named from Calabrin because um, Calamir had uh, an idea, if you will. Alright, now, we start in the west this time around. And it starts with, um, yeah, with Bordevin taking on Crackdown. 
And the bugger chooses to stand and face us. Well, <laughs> oh. Okay, so there are four melee units of the Orcaman variety. And then we have some crossbows of the Uruk variety and some archers of the less heavily armored Uruk variety. I th you know, 15 armor here, 8 armor here. I mean, not all our troops have uh, great armor stats, but at this point they are all upgraded to uh, the extent of our capability. So I think Crackthorn will find us a particularly hard, thorned nut to crack. We'll quickly save the game, just for good measure, and uh, then I'll see you on the field. Let them have it, man. So this is Bordevan's army. It has been sailing all the way from Umbar up here. And its crown jewel is its abundance of seaward lancers. Ready to uh, lance seaward, as it were, straight into the gullet of our foe. And, uh, I mean, look at this. They're basically offering themselves up for our pleasure. <laughs> nice. Uh, I actually think our archers will be... Well, they may be situationally useful in delaying their attacks a bit by, you know, forcing them into uh, compromised p positions. To, to brace against what we are sending their way. Oh, hello there, here come the Bane Guard. <laughs> so, first come the Silver Swan, the finest cavalry unit in the game, probably. Look at that, 15 charge bonus, 11 attack, and that's without experience added, which would add a potential 3 extra to f up to 14, which would be crazy. And then 33 defense, I mean, that is uh, on par with the heaviest of the dwarves, really. So, uh, lovely, lovely, lovely little unit there. Um... And here we are simply gonna swipe in and smack some orcs. Very nice. Okay, Bordevan, take your bodyguard elsewhere. Oh, look at that. A Bane Guard just going... <laughs> getting straight pummeled by two sewer lancers at the same time. We need to keep these guys moving. Because otherwise, they'll be very sorry very soon. And we don't like to have our troops be sorry. That's... Uh, that would be a decidedly sad state of affairs. Alright, melee troops go and counter the Bane Guard. Ooh, what's that? You just try <laughs> Silver's one just charging straight through everything. They don't care. Um, and I suppose they don't need to because they're the heaviest folks around. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, good. This Bane Guard was used to 60. That is, um, you know, what I call effective. Alright, um, yeah, you charge into those, the Lancers will be free then to charge into others. This battle is going to be wonderful. Oh lord, look at that, they just all run away, they know it's time. The, <laughs> the Silver Swan bloody. has come. Lost half their men. Uh, the archers are running away, the Bane Guard are basically buggering off as well. And now all that remains is um, those spear guard, essentially. Yeah. Okay, you guys go to there. Nice of this one. Oh no, you've lost a single man. Everybody, call off the attack. We have suffered an incalculable loss. How incalculable, you ask? It can be calculated as being one person. There he is. Nope. Don't charge like that. 
Whenever you see cavalry starting to approach the enemy without going into charging formation, uh, it's just to tell you that they're not going to have a good time doing it. Basically. That's when you got to step in, be the adult in the room, and go, Nope, you do this properly. Behold how our cowardly folk... Wonderful. Everybody's fleeing. Everyone's defeated. Well, I mean, except us, of course. We only lost 1% of our forces. <laughs> ah, hello, archers. Goodbye. So, a largely untested army, but it has done good things. And a bit of experience has been handed around the ranks as a result. It's good to see. Board in the Middle, of course, was mightily experienced from this the Arjuna Wars victory. at the beginning of the campaign, and uh, he will be teaching his brethren more rather well, I think. Oh no, those seven uh, casualties there were from uh, friendly fire, or uh, friendly casualties, as it were. And uh, that tells me that they charged into open pike lines. Okay, this can happen to the best of us. But that's actually a non-trivial amount of the troops that we lost. Like, nine out of sixteen were lost to our own pikes, probably. Yeah, that doesn't make me too proud. But it does give me hope for the future. Because if Isengard can only kill, like... What's that? Seven of our troops in a single battle? Uh, it doesn't bode well for them, does it? And off they go. Gondor is, victorious. Gondor is indeed victorious. Ah, oh, we could get bandits here. Not tempted, sorry. I prefer professionals. Let us sit up camp here. No. We have to do something about Glolg here. So. Your thorn. Named in honor of the great commander who currently resides in Oipamari over here. No, no, sorry. No, your thorn is a different one, isn't he? Uh, okay, I forget who your son is. Anyway, anyway, you're going this way, my lovely friend. Um, yeah. Let us sit up camp here. And you will follow Grolg. Now, Grolg, no doubt, has his sights securely vested upon relieving the siege of Breknas. And since that is his, his plan, and indeed within his capability, we should not try... To take on that fight. That would uh, be bad. So instead, we're going to go back to that fort and we're going to hold it. If they come anywhere near this fort, we're going to train our trebuchets upon the gate and <laughs> wait for them to go in. Yes. Okay. So, more importantly, though, we must put pressure on the Hornberg in other ways, such as facilitating an attack upon the Hornberg. Or Helm's Deep, as it were. Branon, legendary commander already at the age of 23. He's like, he's got like Napoleonic uh, tendencies or something. Uh, uh, let's hope he doesn't, because we don't want him to overthrow our government and uh, try to uh, rule by decree. Anyway, let's go to the Hornberg and uh, have a look-see. We've got siege equipment, so we can assault the place right away. And Lord Zoltnach conqueror of the place, sits there still, having apparently done very little since uh, that day of success. He just decided to peace out after that and uh, see what glory could be had in uh, seeking refuge in a mountain castle, essentially. Um, yeah, so he's got some forces to be reckoned with, like, you know, these Urukai, they are not nothing. Um, these berserkers, they can get quite annoying, but overall, I'm not that impressed. We can deal with much of this. I mean, and our guards of Ascalia, our wardens of the White Tower, Talon Knights, they're all equal to or surpassing the Urukai infantry in both strength and, in our case, also number. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to attack them. Don't let them any further. 
Now the aim of the game today is to bring down that gate and then focus everything else on smacking down the walls of Helm's Deep. If the wall is breached, Helm's Deep will fall. We have some pikes that might lead uh, the charge into the breach, I think. Well, it depends on which troops are where. They should go after the lighter troops. These guys can take on the heavier ones. Same type of troops, they're just better at the whole dealing with heavies thing. Hmm. But we've got a lot of heavy swordsmen as well. I'm sort of tempted, <laughs> if you pardon the pun to bring let's see if we can bring yeah let's try to bring our archers in through the causeway Spearman, you can just join team three. Team one and two, you'll be going for the gate. Okay. So, first of all, smack down the gate. That's where they have most troops, it seems. But they're also on the move, so time will tell if that holds true. Forty-five percent damage on the gate. Seems good to me. And then once um, our trebuchets have taken it down completely, oh, a little miss there, but you'll get it next time. But once that happens. We're just going to take it over and say hello to this wall over here. It should be a pretty strong one. We breached the enemy's walls. Lovely. Ah, and we even uh, made a little bit of death happen over there. What are you guys coming out? I mean, I'm not going to deny that my heart truly desires this. Okay, what are we dealing with here? Urukai Raiders. <laughs> no trouble. No trouble. Okay. At this point, we're probably going to send the archers in uh, through here, and then here, and up there. So, the aim of having them on the wall will be to use them to envelop the uh, enemy up here in archer fire along the square. And simply force them into an aggressive defensive posture they can't win. And then, that is probably going to make some of these buggers move. If it isn't, then it's going to disadvantage them a lot. Tactically. But if they do move we will capitalize upon it by bringing in the pole arms to establish a little bit of control all right i want that wall down i want it down now but i mean in five minutes we'll be we'll do you know So, they're sending in some crossbows, and they seem to be uh, very trigger-happy indeed. So, they'll likely just shoot a bunch of nasty, nasty missiles over the wall. Or they'll just stand there and look bemused at uh, the events taking place before them. It either suits me. I'm just going to have some tea in the meantime. Yeah, 
we should have enough ammunition to bring down this wall. So what we have to do is 55%, which would be 11. That's four rounds of ammunition. Yeah, yeah, seems good. Seems good. Oh, hello. The crowds are thinning already. They're moving in to try and hold us here. Alright, just so. Uh, getting a little bit of grief now. But that's just what it is. Okay, uh, I think um, Team 1, Team 2, just uh, go and do what you do. We've reached our and smackety do. Time to take this place. We don't have too many um, anti-cavalry units here, so I think I'm just we going to uh, smash together. ball our cavalry in there as well. It'll prove decisive, don't you know? Because what we need to do is break our enemy's formations beyond all, everything. I mean, that, that's, that's the main thing. Our troops are already winning, so all we need to do is ah, behold the glory of uh, our Minnesota Guardians, of course, and then... The second thing we need to do is take our lances in. Just eat away at their formation and integrity and uh, allow our infantry to capitalize. Hello, Rakai Raiders. You're not going to have a good time here, are you? <laughs> nah. This cavalry is not the most heavily armored in the world. But they are going to be good enough for the purpose we are setting out. Um, I mean, in the meantime, uh, let's uh, use some heavy firepower upon those Urukai crossbows over there. Now, how are our pole arms doing? Quite well, as it happens. I don't think that they really like the idea of doing this. Thank you, sons of Numenor. And our cavalry has basically broken through over here, which means we can put them over here and uh, establish a lovely little zone of control. We might even be able to bring some cavalry to charge into this exposed flank over there. <laughs> it appears the Uruks don't really have a clear plan for what to do in the event of being attacked from both sides. But they seem to be putting a lot, an awful lot of their attention into halting us in both places. So, um, the divide and conquer strategy seems to be reasonably effective. Hello. I have cavalry and you don't, and that means you die. I have cavalry and you don't. Trust me. This is goodbye. Uh, sorry, sorry, of course. You do have cavalry. I should acknowledge that. Or do you? No, I don't think you do. Sorry, you don't have cavalry. My mistake. Okay, let's get um, the Minas Hithil Guardians to take care of the crossbows over there. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be nice. Oh, hello, bodyguard. Hmm. Well, this is where the general can be found. I mean, <laughs> oh, I love the troops have already just wiped out about everything that could ever oppose them here. So now the bodyguards come, and of course. They will take a toll on our forces. Naturally they will, but it's not going to be as bad as all that. And here come the guardians of Minas Ithil, having travelled all the way from the Mordgal Vale to be here.
Oh dear. Hello there, bodyguard. You've gotten yourself surrounded. And I'm going to capitalize on that and just try to take them out as violently as possible. Okay, how are we doing over here? Our pikemen have borne the brunt of the enemy ire, and uh, at the same time, they have been supported by the hard hitting guards of Iskidius and of the fountain. Wonderful. Well, at this rate, they're definitely going to be um, happily surprised with what we have in store for them. The thing about Helm's Deep is that it takes a bloody while to take. It's a very defensively minded settlement. And even though the enemy does not have the same martial capability as our army, they're still holding off us off decently and inflicting some casualties that we wouldn't see in an open field with this type of battle. We would just be charging them in the rear all day and uh, laughing all the way to Valinor. But uh, that's not quite how it's going here. It's getting a bit more bloody. A bit more gritty, if you will. But still, things are definitely going quite well. Even over here, where we are facing perhaps the most formidable unit of the enemy army, which is the Urukai Infantry. With its, like, 25 armor stat. 10 attack, 5 charge. Yeah, it's a good unit. It's a good unit. It basically com compares with the Haven Guard that we have. So... But then you look at the uh, Guardians of Minas Ithil. It's roughly equal. Although these birdie guys have uh, locked morale. Which the Haven Guard can't really boast of. Mm-hmm. Now, the only one we're fighting here seems to be the general who is holding out to the last. We haven't received the notification of his death, which would be um, our main indication of his passing. Yeah, there he is. Getting slashed in the head multiple times. Now, let's get some spearmen over there. We can even take some of these guys, put them over there too. Doesn't seem like that would be much of a liability. Now, our plan about catching them in the center has not really come to fruition in, that, in the way we initially dead. decided. Let the crows have his miserable bones and oh, the hello. Have his men. Lord Zognak, the conqueror of Hornburg. Oh, wait, was he the heir to Zaraman? Come on. Really? Well, um, that'll send his army running, and yet yeah, there it goes. And we heal a few percent, that's good. Now, what do we lose most? Pikemen. Understandably. Yeah, 110 of those. So that's a third of our losses in pikemen. Um, and that is the unit we have the easiest time retraining out of all of them. And we lost a few archers, of course. It's not too bad, though. Not too bad. The waffle approves. Now, Helm's Deep is ours. The Hornburg falls. The leader of Isengard is no more. And uh, we'll just we occupy the, the place. There's plenty we can make use of here. And we wouldn't want to damage some of the buildings that mean a lot to us. We 
going to want to repair the damage we have to do and get started on the whole business of reconstruction and improvement where possible and it should be possible in quite a few locations but trade is not really one of them hello cross are you cross with me for having uh, crossed your superiors in this most egregious manner hmm I bet you are And Brannon becomes the conqueror of Hornburg. What great branding for Brannon. Indeed, I uh, want to pay tribute to my German cousins out there. And entitle this Brannenburg. Eh? How's that? I mean, it's. it's <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's uh, it, it, it's a slightly silly pun. I know, I know, I know. And we have Argonwe. A relatively generic general, but one who's well equipped to for, uh, for future action. His presence will be felt with great enthusiasm. That's for sure. And get some troops in here for the free upkeep of it all. And we can even train some more. Right here in Antwaid. And since it's a very good unit, I'm saying that, yeah, we should. We can turn these As to Gynad and, uh, oh, actually, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What am I doing? Haha, <laughs> these guys can go to Antwaid and uh, be retrained. Running supply lines right through enemy lands is a bit risky, you might say, but it's a risk we're willing to take. Especially in a turn based game like this. Alright. And eventually, uh, dear Norni uh, whose name I've been unable to pronounce with any degree of satisfaction throughout this entire campaign, I'm not going to start uh, pulling out phonetic books on uh, <laughs> Numenorian names in order to find out. So, it is what it is. Now the intrigue I have around the borderlands here with Kalas and uh, Gondor and the wild men of Enderweith over here and then Isengard is that, um, you know, Gondor was fighting Isengard and Enderweith on this front and having okay success doing so, but I thought it might be better to channel our efforts directly into the White Hand. And so I made an alliance pact with Enderweith in order to facilitate peace between the two nations and a renewed focus of Gondor upon Isengard to uh, help us just eradicate them a little bit quicker. And um, it seems that the peace has held for a couple of turns, so that's very reassuring. Now, speaking of peace holding, uh, we have a similar situation with uh, Kand. Let's hope it remains that way when we walk through the land. Surely they can't be that offended. <laughs> Prince Adrahil, though, he'll also walk into the lands of Matram. We will attack it, I guess. Maybe. Yes, my lord. Unless they just give us their settlement. Makes perfect sense to me why they would. So, I'll give you trade rights and map information. Oh, and I will also pay you say 25,000 Even a beggar would spit on your offering. 100,000 you say? Oh, well. You know what? I think so I might I just conquer the place. You do have some decent troops in there, so it's going to be a fight, but it's going to be a fight that Adrahil is happy to do. So, we're going to essentially just bring about every little bit of our army that we have. If you want to attack us uh, upon seeing our siege right before you, feel free. Feel free. Hmm, these two good lances would be nice. So let's get in this way. They can help annoy Pomari. And, um, Kutukum, you are that much closer to a barracks. 
How good is your public order now? 120, it's but getting better every turn. So, with that in mind, we're going to take all the mariners because they might be retraining the Noiba Mali. All the Silver Swan for similar reasons. All of these. And a few spearmen, a few swordmen. Lovely. Crystal Combs sits back with a paltry few troops. But they can uh, they can deal with it. I am confident of this. Tomorrow's journey planned out. What else am I confident of? Mm, I am confident in uh, my esteem of the dear Kurwan. He might be very useful to us. Similar to Fardun, who's been sitting here for a while. Uh, undoubtedly waiting for a call to arms. But exactly where he should go? Well, that is the big question. Oh, we just need to train some troops. That mortar army went away again. Where did it go? Has it gone into the shadows over here? Is that what's going on here? Probably hiding somewhere in the forests. Yeah, yeah. You know what, these guys didn't go to cannon after retraining. Boom, boom, boom. And then they're ready to do the dirty deed of war. Ready then to do the dirty deed of war. Ready to fight for the land of our war. Your will, my lord. Um, I will say it soon again. I've said it once before. They will be ever ready for ever more. Um, and, um, hmm, have some of these, we trained in Mithrast, yes. We can have three more slots for retraining, so that will include these. And we can also grab these, send them to the Lamroth first of all, and then on from there. And, uh, Gerbertol for last, you can just get some knights. Very nice, if you will. Very nice, if you... Sorry. Sorry, these puns are getting away from me. At this point, I should probably just, um... Call the next turn, shall we? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Or maybe we should, uh, smack up Riagrat, or... Just see out of curiosity what he decides to do next. I, I'm actually curious. Oh... Menus has returned, and he's less of a clue of what to do than before, it seems, because he's just doing nothing. So, shall we put together a little plan? Here's my plan. Halvan. He's a lovely guy. He's going to take over from Namir, and Namir in, is in turn going to um, go to Minas Ithil. Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong guy. Uh, no, 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 no. I did send the right guy. Good, Namir. Good. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yeah. So what's the point of sending him there? You say? Haha. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. He is uh, in charge of a decent defensive force, but we are going to channel a few troops into it over the next two turns. Maybe three, I don't know, but at least two turns. And thus produce a marvellous offensive force. Hmm, yes. So, can we retrain Silver Swan there anywhere in Mordor? Not really. No. 
Now, at the same time, Lord Elfir, he puts together a tower over here. He grabs a bit of siege equipment. See that? That's pretty good. Um, now, what he will also do is bring together Tribbly Tribbly Do. Tripsy Doozy. Why not just all the good ones? My Lord. As you oh no, we have too many good ones! Ah, oh, what a problem to have! My Lord. Okay. Your will, my Lord. We can leave behind a unit of rangers, I guess. And what else? What can we spare? Maybe some veterans as well. But four units of rangers, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, and... Then these go in there. Ah, let's get some... Let's get some of those, those veterans in there. That's good. This is a fine army. You guys will just go to Palatur if you can. Which two of you can. Which will undoubtedly make them all feel much better disposed toward us. Now, this army is going to go to Karkukor. Where the last of the nine seems to sit. Lay a flick of the bowed. Mm, hello. Unless there is an extra Nar school down here in Nurn. Let's see what Kelepindor finds. Well, they find plenty of Kandish forces, and maybe they will attack us. We don't know. But for now, I'm just hoping that our trade with them is giving them pause for thought in that department. Handir? Yes. You have a path? You'll be joined. And to Ibmari you go. This place can be upgraded. And it seems we have built a lot this turn. Oh, my lord, yes we have. There's a huge amount of buildings, which explains the apparent budget deficit. But uh, it's just a blip, basically, because of the confluence of a lot of finished projects and the commencement of a lot of new ones. So not in itself a huge cause for concern, although we will want to capture some more settlements to increase our profitability. We will. Now we're also getting some good settlements in there, just generally speaking, so life is good, life is good. Um, yeah, I think that's fine for now. If we uh, come upon any other settlements in uh, need of new projects, then uh, we'll of course take a look at it. Angmar and Dale are at war. You don't see that too often. Because they start pretty far away from each other. You know, Angmar is over here. Dale is all the way over here. So, usually the snow orcs are in the way. But not now. Oh, it's because Dale is all the way into the Greyland Vales? The up. Uh, what? Man. And, and of course, Angmar have taken. Couldn't. Madness. I mean, this is what happens to the North when you turn your back on it for a few minutes. Your Quite startling stuff. Okay. Well, um, looking at this, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna sit right here and write myself a letter and make believe it came from you. <laughs> because then Grolk will be unable to pass. Oh, but like this you can. Okay. Then we are going to take a little cavalry detachment and put it there. Okay, that works. Okay, Bordevin. My friend. Come this way. There are more places. To be uh, contested, shall we say. Contested with uh, every fibre of our glorious being. <laughs> Oh, orc, so it's closing in on Etoras. 
have fun. If they decide to come, we will have a, a whale of a time. But Aeon, uh, why don't you go to honor this? You know, keep the door open. Because then we can put it together that all the way here in the uh, Ascalith region. Ships and, uh, well, sorry, we actually already have an army. <laughs> And Melion is well equipped, so we should just send this off already. And uh, where's it going? Well, it's going to Honoris, of course. <laughs> of course, of course, I've got the lisp. It would seem, it would seem that I've got caught myself a lisp. Come on, um, get over there. Build a thing. Bear there and walk. And then we go all the way to Bardfest, which is somewhere over here. Now, let's have a look at uh, Mataram. Hmm. This episode is drawing to a close, so I don't Without think question. we will be fighting this battle, but we could certainly instigate it. And then uh, I'll simply see you next time. And Meldir will essentially continue on to Mistrand. Mm, that have rid themselves of the siege that weighed them down, but of course uh, that can't last forever and uh, <laughs> we have our plans. So armies are moving everywhere, right? I mean we have our dear faction, Lee, uh, faction heir, Lord Elfir, conqueror of Baradur itself, going to finish off Mordor with their final settlement it seems. Kervendor, uh, Nurn, okay, he'll, no, that will be the final settlement because of course we can reach Karkakorn in three turns and uh, we'll need at least five, six turns even to get to Nurn, okay, fair enough. And then we have armies moving in to Rune because we like to. These are the lovely things we can do. And we have um, Atrahil who will start a war. Are you ready? Are you ready for more? Are you ready for war? Are you ready? Or have you gotten sore? Hmm. That's a good question. Now. Kalas is relatively undefended. I grant you. It is. But we're also absolutely smacking the brains out of Bregnas. And if they do threaten Kalas, then I would venture the notion that we can actually just ride right back with our cavalry forces and smack up these bastards. Um, you know, looking at all this. I think we can send enough cavalry forces between the two of those armies to actually make a very, very positive difference. Um, now, do we have any agents around here? We do have one in Isengard. My lord, my lord. Who has the bigger movement range? Well, they my both lord. have enough. So, who is the better of you? Kolpindor. Derweth has a lot of troops he spots. Well, that's what it is, I guess. And there's Snagger, a general. Well, what an awkward name for a general, because Snagger means slave or something like that. Anyhow, um, we're not gonna hold that against them, of course. I mean, we try to create as much of an egalitarian society as feudalism will allow. I suppose not terribly egalitarian, but uh, everything's on a spectrum, you see. Everything's on a spectrum. And speaking of Spectrum, we have run the gamut of this episode, I think. So, um, yeah, if you are curious for more, there will be links on the screen right about now. It would be wonderful to see your name in the comments. Um, or just to uh, see a little digital reminder of your pleasure by liking the video. That would be lovely. Either way, though... I am just happy to have had you along, especially if you're still listening after all this while and waffling. Yeah, I am thankful. So, be kind to yourself, 
be good to those you love. Remember that if you want some, uh, some slightly, um, rambling discussions on Rings of Power and its implications, then hop over to the Barlin campaign and, um, you shall be waffled to your heart's content. The Barlin campaign. The, uh, Casa Doom campaign, as it is formerly known. Yeah. So yeah, with that, once again, be kind to yourself, be good to others, and I will definitely see you soon. <laughs>